Okay. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome everybody and good afternoon. We are so excited to be having this Peace Corps information session today. My name is Katie Adams and I'm program manager in the Sparkman Center for Global Health at UAB. I'll be talking more in the second half. Um, but first, we're going to hear from our wonderful Alabama recruiter for Peace Corps, Kenyatta Spiller. And I know she will. I'm sure she will tell you all about her <laughs> history with Peace Corps and where she was a volunteer and all of that. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to her. Thank you so much, Katie, again, for this opportunity. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all are enjoying this uh, Friday, Junior, as we move into tomorrow. Um, yeah, I am the recruiter for our beautiful state of Alabama. I'm originally from Montgomery, Alabama. It's where my mother retired from the Army. And I actually joined the Peace Corps after graduate school. I served in the beautiful nations of Botswana and Zambia, Africa from 2015 to 2018. Uh, I served as a community and economic development volunteer, and then in my final year with the Peace Corps, I was a um, response volunteer in the health sector. Um, I graduated from the Alabama State University and Savannah State University, so I'm a two-time HBCU grad. Okay, And yeah, so I, again, served after graduate school. Uh, in Botswana, the Peace Corps partnered me with two amazing organizations. The first was a government office. Um, we serviced, uh, we actually oversaw all the HIV AIDS programming throughout my entire district. I lived in one of the largest villages in Botswana called Mole Palole. And uh, yeah, I went to events in my community and helped collect data so that we could figure out who was being targeted with what messaging in my community. Um, we used that data to design our district budget. So I got to see how money came down from the Matswan and government to all these entities in my community doing HIV AIDS outreach. My other organization was Hope Worldwide Botswana. It was an NGO that serviced orphan and vulnerable children impacted by HIV and AIDS. So um, the children had lost one or both uh, parents to HIV and it had become like child heads of household. So as a Peace Corps volunteer, uh, I would go out into the community with my Hope counterparts and we would build different relationships in the community to help uh, support those households. Um, also, because I was fairly familiar with the, the data, um, um, I was actually given the opportunity to facilitate community conversations around the drivers of HIV and AIDS. So we talked about um, gender-based violence, um, alcohol and substance abuse, mother-to-child transmission, and um, uh, condom use, correct and consistent condom use. Um, What's really great about the Peace Corps is that you will have your primary role in one of our six sectors. And I will show you the six sectors in just a moment. But the Peace Corps encourages volunteers to bring their passions and their interests with them into service. Um, before leaving for the Peace Corps, I'm very, very passionate about gender equity work and women's empowerment work. And so the Peace Corps had an opportunity for me to be trained in GLOW. GLOW stands for Girls Leading Our World. And in essence, it's a youth um, development and empowerment program for girls, adolescent girls and young women. In both of my communities, both in Botswana and in Zambia, adolescent girls and young women were almost 10 times more likely to contract HIV and AIDS than their male counterparts. And so GLOW was an amazing opportunity to collaborate with local influencers and stakeholders in my community to create spaces where we could talk about self-esteem and goal setting, um, where we could talk about what it means to be a leader in your community. Um, and for the young women who had already contracted the virus, we had sessions around positive living and reinforcing the concept that although you do have HIV, the, the virus does not have you and you can go on and live a long and healthy and productive life. Um, of all the work I did during my three years in the Peace Corps, I hold my glow work the closest to my heart. I worked with some of the most resilient, most beautiful souls you will ever meet in this lifetime. And uh, my time in Botswana really laid a foundation for me to extend and go to Zambia. 
So if you think about Alabama and Tennessee, they kind of share a border. So I just moved up one country, but the, the culture was completely different. Infrastructure was completely different. And my job was different. Um, the Peace Corps was working with the Ministry of Education to train teachers in comprehensive sexuality education. So I worked within a catchment of 22 schools in my village in Chingola. And I trained almost 100 teachers in comprehensive sexuality education. Now I know that seems like a fairly like old concept uh, stateside, but uh, in Zambian culture, even using English words for different parts of the anatomy was considered very, very taboo. And so it was very challenging work. A lot of my teachers thought I was there to, to teach the kids how to have sex. And that is just not what I was there to do. Um, so I worked with the local education board, NGO coordinators to train teachers in comprehensive sexuality, sexuality education so that they could go back to their schools and train their faculty and staff. And the whole premise of the program is that by training the teachers, the teachers could empower their students to make the, de the best decisions when it comes to their sexual and reproductive health. So um, these pictures are just some of my favorites from service. Uh, again, I served in Botswana and Zambia. And so the picture in the left-hand corner is actually a picture at Victoria Falls. I can, it's so crazy now that I look at the picture now. I was standing on the Botswana side in the country I was serving in, and I was looking over at the country I was going to, to serve in next. So that's one of my favorite pictures. Um, the, the picture in the middle where I have on the red blazer is a, a festival festival called the Tugaruba. Um, in my part of Botswana, you celebrate your totem and our totem was uh, the crocodile. So this was a festival that celebrated the totem and Botswana culture. Uh, I always say this, I had the Beyonce of host mothers. She was a village mom. And so whenever someone got married or a new baby was born or someone passed away, my host mother was there to help support the family. And so I think in my first three months during PST, if I didn't go to one wedding, I went to like a hundred. And I didn't realize it then, but I was building connections with the people who I would be uh, working with over the next two years. So the picture up at the right hand corner that's me pointing at a, a plate of of uh of Matuanan food that's a traditional wedding plate with with seswa which is one of my favorite Matuanan dishes which is pounded beef it is absolutely amazing underneath that that's a picture with the first class of teachers that I trained in Chingola Zambia I went to their school and observed their training and I awarded them their certificates in front of their entire school and their students and the faculty and staff and then the other three Three remaining pictures are pictures from um, my glow camps, which again, I love so much. Uh, we did glow camps with girls and then we also did one glow camp while I was in uh, Botswana for guys. So it was guys leading our world. So we still did some of the same uh, project focuses, but we did it with, with young men. So um, I could talk about Peace Corps all day, but I wanna give you all some background on who we are as an agency. Um, so the Peace Corps focuses on three goals while we promote friendship and world peace. The first is that our volunteers work in collaboration with local influencers and stakeholders to train host country nationals and technical skills in one of our six sectors. And again, I'll show you one of the, I'll show you the six sectors in just a moment. Uh, the second goal is that you share your unique experience as an American with your host community. There are a million and one different ways that you can do this. I chose to bring my favorite movies and music and artwork and family photos and recipes to share with my counterparts and my host families, both in Botswana and in Zambia. And the final goal, you will do this for the rest of your life as a return Peace Corps volunteer, is you share your experience with other Americans. So before COVID, when I was on campus at UAB, um, anytime somebody saw this Peace Corps emblem, people would literally walk up to me and ask me about Peace Corps, who we are and what we do. And of course, I will humbly share my experience as a volunteer. So as promised, these are the six sectors that you can serve in as a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, again, I want to reiterate that while you will have your primary role in one of the six sectors, we encourage you to bring your, your passions and your talents and your gifts to your host community. Um, 
as a secondary project. And the Peace Corps has a number of different curriculums that you can be trained in throughout your 27 months of service where you can bring those talents and gifts. Again, I served as a health volunteer in Bots uh, health. I served as a community and economic development volunteer in Botswana and a health volunteer in Zambia. Both of those projects focuses specifically on HIV AIDS awareness and prevention, but the project focuses of each sector will vary depending on the country that you serve in. So this is a map of all of our Peace Corps countries. Uh, the Peace Corps is active in over 60 countries around the world. So we're in Central America and in Latin America. We're in parts of Eastern Europe and Asia, the Pacific Islands, and of course, belovedly, on the continent of Africa. So there are benefits to being a Peace Corps volunteer both during and after service. Uh, Peace Corps volunteers do earn a living stipend. You are paid in local currency. Um, your stipend is used to cover your basic um, personal needs. Um, the Peace Corps covered my housing, my health insurance. Again, I served after graduate school, so I did need the deferment, so I didn't have to worry about making payments on my student loans. Um, the only bills I really had in my house were transportation to and from work and then my groceries for the week. Um, Peace Corps volunteers do earn 48 vacation days. I come from a military family, so I was used to being away from uh, my family for extended amounts of time. So I made it a goal to see as much of the continent of Africa and my host countries as possible. And um, you will also receive a number of professional development and career training skills throughout your 27 months of service. Uh, after service, you earn something called a readjustment allowance. It's almost $10,000 before taxes. Um, I chose to use that money to come back to Alabama or else my mother would have drugged me out of Zambia. <laughs> but I moved here to Birmingham and started recruiting and meeting amazing students like yourselves throughout the state. But I did have uh, friends who decided to continue to live and work and serve on the continent of Africa separate from the Peace Corps and they use their readjustment allowance to do that. I also had friends who decided to move to different parts of the world and teach English. Um, so you have a lot of different options after Peace Corps. If you're thinking about graduate school, um, we do have something called the Coverdale Fellowship, which I'll talk about in detail after this slide, but you also earn something called NCE, which is non-competitive eligibility. So if any of you who have any aspirations of working for any federal agency, you can leverage your NCE status to make you more competitive in the employment process. Um, I actually use my NCE status to become a recruiter for the state of Alabama. Um, I finished service in September of 2018, and I started recruitment not even a whole 30 days later. So that NCE status really does make a difference in terms of becoming a federal employee and standing out in the application process. You can also leverage your 27 months of service towards public service loan forgiveness. I encourage all of the candidates that I work with and talk to every day to please reach out to your federal student loan provider and ask questions about how you can get portions of your student loans forgiven. So for those of you who are thinking about graduate school, the Peace Corps has something called the Coverdale Fellowship. It's a partnership with over 200 uh, universities across the country. Depending on our agreement with the institution, the Peace Corps does provide uh, tuition assistance. Some schools offer room and board. Um, all that we ask as an agency is once you do your 27 months, you return back, you apply to the fellowship and you are accepted, you help recruit volunteers on that campus while you earn your advanced degree. This is a lifetime benefit and you can earn multiple degrees under the Coverdale Fellowship. So once you go and serve and you decide you wanna come back and get your master's in public health, and then you wanna get a JD or a PhD, you have access to this benefit. So you have already taken those first steps by being here today. I uh, tell all of my candidates to so please, please, please do your research. Uh, a lot of people think that the Peace Corps is like the military and it's nothing like that. At any point during my three years of service, I could have called a program manager or my country director and said, hey, I want to go back home. And they would have facilitated me getting back to um, 
to my home of record in Montgomery, Alabama. I think in some cases as quickly as 72 hours. Um, so we really want you to know um, before you start the application process, what you are stepping into and how big this commitment is. This is a job um, and it is going to require a significant amount of sacrifice and intentionality and flexibility. So I encourage all of my candidates to please, please, please do your research. And research will look different for every candidate that I get the opportunity to work with. I know before I left for the Peace Corps, I used to stalk Peace Corps volunteers on YouTube. I wanted to see how they packed. I wanted to see what their houses looked like. Some volunteers even did like um, a day in the life video where they would walk through their villages and show their communities. And I found that that really helped me to get into the mindset of what Peace Corps could potentially look like for me. So again, as the recruiter for the state, I'm here as a resource to you. So if you're interested in talking to um, an RPCV who served in a region of the world that you're interested in or a sector that you're interested in or has a shared visible or invisible identity um, and you want someone who can speak to that, I'm here to act as a resource and to connect you with those RPCVs. So I, before I hand it over to uh, Kate, this is a quick snapshot of the application process. Um, you can apply to the Peace Corps in less than an hour. Again, I'm here as a resource to you to help you workshop your resume and your personal statement. Um, because you, you will need your resume, your personal statement for the application, in addition to three professional references. I encourage you to seek someone who can speak to your academics, your leadership, and to your community service. Um, once you gather all of that information and we workshop your, your resume and your personal statement, you go to the website, which is www.peacecorps.gov. Up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a big red button that says apply. You click on that and it will take you directly to the application portal. You register and you upload those documents that we worked on together into the portal. You give us some very basic background information, uh, your name, your email, your mailing address, your phone number, basic stuff like that. And then you click submit. <clears throat> And then we will reach out to you with your health history survey. Um, the Peace Corps does not want to send you to a peanut farm in West Africa if you have a peanut allergy. So I encourage all of my candidates to please disclose, you know, any kind of health, past health conditions, or if they're chronic, feel free to disclose that via the form. Um, and then the placement office, not your recruiter, the placement office will reach out to you to schedule an interview. And again, I'm here to help prepare you for that as well. The interview is about 60 to 90 minutes, um, and it's a series of questions and scenarios that Peace Corps volunteers face um, every day on the ground. And again, I'm here to prepare you to articulate how different situations you faced um, while at UAB have prepared you to become a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, after you rock the interview, which I know you will, you will receive your invitation that'll have your country of service, your official title, and your date of departure. And you will start on the legal and, and clear, legal and medical clearance process. Try to say that three times fast. Um, it's a lot of blood work, a lot of vaccinations, going to the eye doctor, the dentist. We really want to make sure that you are at optimal health before you leave for Peace Corps service. Um, onboarding is pretty much like an online orientation. It'll be your first exposure to some of the core expectations of volunteers. Uh, and then departure for me, the Peace Corps flew me from my home of record in Montgomery, Alabama, to Newark, New Jersey, where I met up with the 85 other Americans who accepted accepted invitations to serve in Botswana. And we started the pre-service training process together. So it, it is a fairly long process, but again, I'm here as a support throughout this entire uh, experience for you. And again, if you have any questions and wanna be connected with a specific RPCV, I'm here to, to do that as well. Um, one of the biggest uh, and greatest contacts that you have is, uh, is Katie Adams. She is the coordinator for the Peace Corps prep program, and she's gonna talk about that in more detail. Um, but the Peace Corps prep program, it, it is amazing. It triples your competitiveness in the application process. So if becoming a Peace Corps volunteer is something that you're thinking about, I strongly, strongly encourage you to get in contact with her as soon as possible so that she can start talking you through some of those initial steps of how to earn your certificate and, and how to stand out in the process of becoming a Peace Corps volunteer. So Katie, I'm going to pass it off to you. All right. 
wow, thank you so much. Um, I know, oh, someone in the chat seems to be having an issue with the audio. I know I can hear fine, and so I hope. Uh, I can hear fine as well. Okay, it's good to know. Um, okay. There was a question in the chat, Kenyatta, okay. if you wanna look at that and I'll get my slides up so that then we can start talking about um, Peace Corps prep. Okay, my computer is going kind of slow. Let's see here, what is the question? I've been interested in Peace Corps since I was a kid, like you, I'm interested in working. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Um, please read. Yes, I can absolutely talk you through that. Um, and you said, since it has been so long, should I pick up other interests? So here's the thing. Um, because of COVID, our application process has been. Hey, I'm sorry different. to interrupt you. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're answering my question. I left and jumped back in because I couldn't hear anything that either of you were saying. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you can hear us because, yeah, she was yeah. talking about your question. I've been interested so long, but I can't get back in touch with my recruiter, and it's been since September of last year. Wow. So, um, yeah, I can absolutely help you um, if you have additional questions. Have you heard back from placement? Oh, well, clearly you have because you had your interview, correct? Yes, I've had my interview and I received um, like a monthly email telling me, hey, check out climate, check out cuisine, um, mm -hmm. saying that they still have it. Um, and then I've also received the fingerprint kit for if I were to need it. But other than that, I've had no like, you know, actual talking to a person communication since last September. Okay, I can absolutely help you with that. Um, there have been some slight delays due to COVID. And so I will absolutely support you with getting back connected with your placement officer, especially since you've already received your invitation. They're supposed to be talking you through those steps of medical and legal clearance. So I can absolutely help you with that. No problem at all. Awesome. <laughs> especially I since you're in Alabama, I'm not sure if where, I believe his name was Jason, but I can look back through the email, but I'm not sure if he's in Alabama. I got you. Yeah, so what I will do is put my contact information in the chat and we can start getting those next steps to getting you connected with your placement officer and kind of figuring out what happened there. And I'm so sorry about that. No, that's okay. It's something that I'm so interested in that like, even though it's been a while, I'm still holding on to it, but I would like some type of communication so I don't feel so in the dark. Absolutely. And that's 100% understandable because you're trying to get your life affairs in order and start planning. So I would be honored to help you figure out those next steps and who you need to talk to to figure out what's going on. Thank you. You are very welcome. And thank you so much for hanging in there. Yeah, love it. That's great. Um, can folks see my PowerPoint slides and not my notes? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. I always like to check uh, just to make sure. Um, so my name is Katie Adams. Like I said, I'm program manager in the Sparkman Center for Global Health. Um, before I talk about Peace Corps prep, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience um, of the Peace Corps and uh, as a volunteer. And I do not work for Peace Corps. So the things that I say are like from my own experience and my own opinions, um, which I was joking with Kenyatta, but I remember always having that disclaimer on my blog uh, throughout my time in Peace Corps. <laughs> okay, so where was I? I went to the wonderful country of Nicaragua, where I served from September of 2012 until May of 2015. Um, service is typically 27 months because you have three months of training and then 24 months of service. But I stayed a, an extra six months as a volunteer leader. And um, it was mostly to finish out some projects and particularly Camp Glow, which Kenyatta was talking about. Um, as a big part of her service, it was a huge part of my service as well. Um, 
Here on the slide, the bird you see is the national bird of Nicaragua, the Guarabaranco. It's called the turquoise browed motmot in English, which does not sound as cool, but it is a gorgeous bird that I would actually sometimes see when I was on walks um, where I lived, which was really cool. Um, the flag of Nicaragua and then the picture at the bottom is from a school. Most of the schools were painted in the like blue, white, blue that mimics the flag. Uh, and it was just really interesting to me to go all across the country and see that similarity. Um, I won't talk much about my application process because it totally changed since I applied. Um, but I did, I applied when I was a junior in uh, like spring of my junior year of college. And then I left the fall after graduation. Um, So to give you a little geographical grounding here, um, we've got Alabama up here and then almost directly south is Nicaragua. They're about the same size land mass wise, um, but different in population. The population of Alabama is around 4.9 million and the population of Nicaragua is around 6.6 .6 million. So not a huge difference there. Um, it was really nice for most of the year, except when daylight savings time would throw things off. But for most of the year, uh, I would be on the same time zone as my family in Alabama. And that was nice um, for keeping in touch. Um, and travel was pretty easy. It was less than a five hour flight from Atlanta to Managua. And so I actually had like my dad and sister visited one of my best friends from college and then like my mom and my grandma who was in her 70s came down and spent two weeks with me in Nicaragua um over Semana Santa like the time around Easter it was it was great we went all over the place so zooming in <laughs> the star here is on the capital city of Managua that's where the Peace Corps office was located and the three months of training that we had happened in towns like not far from Managua and then I lived where that little heart is um, in a town called San Lucas in the department of Madrid. Uh, Nicaragua was divided into departments, it's like counties. Um, I was in the northern mountainous region. Um, so it was, it got a little chilly, but not cold. It was still Central America after all, um, but Nicaragua, even though it's not very big, has a lot of diversity in like going from beaches to like literal tropics to volcanoes to like mountains where they grow coffee. Um, and so I was in the mountains and it was gorgeous. You can, this photo here is from a lookout that was on the south side of town. And that's, that's basically the town that you see right there. There's like one main road. Um, the Catholic church is in the middle of town with like a park across from it. And that is a typical layout of like every town or city in Nicaragua. If you are at the main Catholic church and if you are looking at it, you know that you are facing east, um, which was very specific, but very helpful because directions were given by cardinal directions. So people would say, go from here two blocks north and then a block west. And you could think like, okay, well, the church is east and so I'm gonna go this way. And then anyways, um, it was a helpful trick to know which way the church faced so that you could like figure out where you were. <laughs> um, the population of the town was around 1300. So it was really small. And I didn't think that I wanted to be in a small town at all, um, but I loved it. I really loved it. Um, I was about five to six hours from the capital, but I only had to go there like every couple months. Um, it wasn't something I had to do all the time, so it wasn't a big deal. Okay, so what did I do? Um, my title as a Peace Corps volunteer was TEFL teacher and teacher trainer. TEFL being teaching English as a foreign language, so I was in the education sector. And um, the two main parts of my like primary job as a tefalero, as we called them, um, one was English co-teaching and co-planning. So the Nicaraguan counterpart that I worked with were the local English teachers. Um, I was not coming in and filling 
a role or taking someone's job as a teacher. Um, I was there to work directly with, um, there would be like three or four teachers that I would work with in a school and we would get together and like go through the curriculum and they're bringing all their knowledge of the curriculum of the students, of like all the cultural norms in education that are different than they would be for me. And I'm bringing like the training that I have from Peace Corps, my native knowledge of English, as well as the supplemented training in the rules of English that we understand as native speakers, but can't always explain unless we've been taught them. Um, and it's really important. A lot of people think like, oh, I could just teach English, but like, probably not <laughs> um, unless you have some experience and some training in it. Uh, definitely have a head start in my fluency, obviously. Um, but the things that I learned about where in your mouth you pronounce different vowels and how to tell students, no, open your mouth this way so they could make the ah sound that we make in English. Kids would crack up when we would be reading vocabulary words and I would say something with an ah sound. I remember one time we had to do a lesson plan on drugs. It was this whole like drug prevention. And so we had to bring it into English class and telling the kids that tobacco was tobacco they about died. They thought it sounded hilarious. Um, they were just like, that's ridiculous. Um, but the things I learned about like pronunciation, that's where I was going with that, uh, were really helpful um, combined with my like native fluency in English. Um, also as a TEFL teacher, the second part of that is teacher trainer. And so I did English classes and workshops for teachers. And my counterpart here was MINED, the Ministry of Education. And this was a way to reach teachers in rural communities that I couldn't work with on a regular basis, um, either because where they lived was too far out for me to be able to go on a regular basis, or what a lot of rural schools would do is they would have Saturday school or they would have Sunday school um, because where their students were coming from, they were having to travel so far that it didn't make sense for them to go Monday through Friday. And so they would go like every Saturday and they would get their high school um, education that way. And so I would do like monthly, sometimes we would have weekly like English discussion groups um, with teachers because they often didn't necessarily live in these far out communities, but would travel there to work. Um, and then we did monthly workshops where we talked about um, lesson planning and different uh, strategies for the classroom, as well as like English practice. Um, where I was, again, with it being like a smaller town, being a bit further from the capital, um, having like, I was in one of the lower income like departments in the country and Nicaragua is already like the second poorest country in the Western hemisphere. Um, and so where I was, there wasn't a lot of access to higher education in English. And so a lot of English teachers might be a teacher who really loved English and was passionate about it. And so the school said, all right, great, you can teach this then. Um, but where I lived, they didn't necessarily have the benefit of getting a degree in English. Whereas some other volunteers that were in bigger cities or that were closer to more touristy areas, they would work with teachers who were fluent in English and it was a very different um, focus that they had in the teachers they worked with. And then a secondary projects, as Kenyatta talked about, um, I ended up working a lot in sexual and reproductive health education and that was not something I expected to do in Peace Corps. I didn't know what public health was before I did Peace Corps and now I work in global health and have a master's in public health. Um, but it was an expressed need in the community where I live. Um, teenage pregnancy is really high in Nicaragua. And it was actually my host sister who was 12 at the time that said, you know, I think there are things about our bodies that they should be teaching us that they're not teaching us. Could you do that? And I was like, right this second, no, but I can find a way. Like, let's find it. And so, <laughs> sorry, I see Kenyatta cracking up at that. It's like, I didn't automatically know all the words for like the 
ovaries and like your uterus. I didn't know all of that Spanish vocabulary, even though I came in with a lot of Spanish. Um, but I worked with um, volunteers from the health sector uh, and they shared resources with me as well as uh, my counterpart for this project ended up being Plan Nicaragua. Plan is like an international um, NGO. They are in lots of countries and there was one of their regional Nicaragua offices was not far from where I lived. Um, and they were our partners for Camp Glow that we did. And so um, I became part of the Peace Corps Gender and Development Committee and then co-chaired that committee. And one of the big things we did was host Camp Glow, Girls Leading Our World. So it was a national camp and girls empowerment retreat where the girls got to, um, from all over the country, got to travel to this like beautiful retreat place. Um, many of them had never necessarily stayed away from their family before, um, had never traveled to like this region of the country before. And to see them get to learn and also just play, it was so much fun. I love camp. I was a camp counselor in college um, and we had so much fun on the zip line and the ropes course and also like the picture where they're on stage here, we were getting girls to um, like act out the different parts of the uh, female reproductive anatomy. So like, okay, we need someone to be the ovaries and then someone be the fallopian tube. <laughs> and then someone was the uterus and talked about like what all of those parts did and just got them really involved in the education. Um, so it was really wonderful and was definitely one of the highlights. I got to take my host sister to this camp and she is just such a little leader. I can't call her little anymore. She is now like 19 and in college, but at the time she was like one of the tiniest ones and was like 12 and it was so sweet. Um, okay. Gotta stay on track because I could talk about this forever as well. Um, <laughs> So home life, not all countries, but uh, I think a lot of countries require you to live with the host family. For the record, I did not live in a house with every person in this photo. Um, it was like a mom, dad, and two daughters and me. Um, and But everybody in this photo was family and they all lived like within a block. This is at my despedida, my goodbye party. Um, and there was like one uncle across the street, like grandma's next door, and then like an aunt, you know, right there. Um, and so it was a very familial atmosphere in this community where I lived. And it's something that I definitely miss being back in the States. I miss the like cross-generational um, relationships that I had in Peace Corps that I think is a lot harder to maintain in the U.S. Um, you can see the house I lived in here. We had one of the nicer houses in town because my uh, host dad worked in construction and my host mom had immigrated to Spain for a couple of years and sent back funds so that they could build a house. Um, and that's my dog that I adopted while I was there. So I did adopt a dog and bring her home and she's curled up at my feet right now. Okay, so why did I do it? Why, why Peace Corps? It's a big commitment. And yeah, there are benefits, but like, what was I thinking? I was thinking like, okay, professional development, you know, graduating college, I majored in Spanish. Like, what do you do? I don't know. Um, I wanted to have a better understanding of the world. I had had the chance to travel a little bit in college, but definitely wanted, knew there was more to see. Um, and I also cared about the relationships. So did I get it? Well, Professional development, the training I received as an educator was phenomenal. Um, I definitely found my passion for global reproductive health while I was a volunteer. And the program planning and creative problem solving skills that I came out of Peace Corps with are, would be really hard to replicate from any other two year just out of college job experience. Um, Cause like Kenya said, it is a job. Um, when it comes to a better understanding of the world, a lot of it is like knowing more about what you don't know. Um, and 
thinking about Peace Corps two years seems like a really long time, but the longer I was there, the shorter it felt because the more I realized what all I didn't know or what all else I wanted to know and wanted to see. Um, I've said before, and I, I think it's really true that like I experienced Nicaragua and like learned about it in a way that I will never know another country um, because of having lived there, because of having volunteer friends that lived all over the country that I got to visit and see where they were and experience their towns and see their relationships. Um, it, it's just really special. It's not like it's unparalleled. Um, and also being able to see my own culture from another lens and to understand like Nicaragua is a country and especially where I was in the Northern region um, that experienced war not that long ago. Like it was just a few decades before I was there. Um, I mean, there was no active war when I was there. It had been decades, but also it had only been decades. Like all of the people I knew in the North had family members that they had lost or had been impacted by the war that was fought in that region of the country. Um, and yeah, I won't get into the politics of it, but like there's a lot that could be said and there's a lot to like learn about um, in that. And then the relationships, like the host sister that I've talked about, she became my goddaughter while I was there. Um, I had visitors from home during service who got to see where I lived and like experience my life with me. Um, and it is, it is so much more than a job. It's like the people that you have coffee with and the friends that you make as volunteers. And that's my goddaughter and my niece who became pen pals and then got to meet um, when my niece traveled back with me and my grandma making tortillas. And um, I just, it's, it's so much more than a job. It really is. Um, and there, it's been seven years since I left Peace Corps and I'm still in touch with folks all the time. I've been back like three times to visit. Um, and I, I like Nicaragua will always be a part of me. Okay, so surely we have convinced you now. You're, you're thinking about Peace Corps. You're like, wow. This is a lot, this is amazing, I didn't even know. Or maybe you did, maybe you did. But regardless, if you're an undergraduate student, you should do Peace Corps Prep. Uh, so Peace Corps Prep is a program for undergraduate students interested in prepping themselves for international development work and potential Peace Corps service. Now, if you're not an undergraduate student and you're thinking, oh, well, okay, I'm gonna get off this info session because this isn't relevant. No, you can still learn something. Stick around. You can ask those questions. It's fine. Uh, you don't. You don't have to be an undergraduate student to apply to Peace Corps for sure. But to do the prep certificate, that is specifically for undergraduate students. Okay. So, who's who? Peace Corps prep. We've got me. I'm the coordinator. I'm in the Sparkman Center for Global Health. Cameron Durham is also on this call. She is. Uh, program coordinator in the Sparkman Center, and she is your backup contact for Peace Corps Prep if I'm not available. And then, of course, Kenyatta Spiller is the actual recruiter and the one who can tell you many more things about the application than I can and actually works for Peace Corps. Okay, so in these slides, we're skipping the what is Peace Corps section because Kenyatta did that. And we're going to go to Peace Corps Prep and then just a little bit about the Sparkman Center. So, you know you're interested in Peace Corps. I know you are. I know you are. We're convincing. How can you listen to me and Kenyatta and our amazing experiences and not be interested? You can't. It's impossible. Okay. So, what's Peace Corps Prep about? All right. Goal of Peace Corps Prep is to help students answer this question. How can you prepare yourself to be the best Peace Corps volunteer you can be? And to do that, you will focus on the requirements for four different competencies. The first one is work sector training and experience. So you go to those six sectors, can you talked about? We got agriculture, we got health, we got environment, we got education, we got youth and development, we got community economic development. I did it, I did it, yes. Okay, so you're gonna pick a sector to focus on um, for, this competency and 
we have a whole guide that lays out like which courses can count for which work sector, um, three of your courses. For example, if you're interested in health and you are a public health student, this is not a problem, right? Like any of your public health classes can count as courses for the health sector, okay? But it doesn't have to be that direct. Like you could be, oh, I'm interested in environment and I'm a public health major, or I'm interested in education and I, I don't know, I am a biology. Oh, well, guess what? They send people to teach biology and to teach science. So you can do that. Um, 50 hours of related experience. This could be from a job, from um, volunteer experience, from an internship. A lot of different things can qualify as that 50 hours of related experience. You don't wanna spread it out over too many different opportunities because Peace Corps values that commitment, you know, and that like continued relationship somewhere. Um, but talk to me, there's examples of what can count in our document, our like student guide. Um, but you can also talk to me about um, what you've done and if you think that it fits or not. Okay, second competency, foreign language skills. Now, this depends on if you're interested in going to a specific region or not. So if you want to go to Latin America to Spanish speaking countries, you got to take at least two Spanish classes. You're going to want to probably take more than that, but you got to take at least that many. <laughs> and if you want to go to French speaking countries, um, like some in West Africa. Yeah, there we go. I always almost say East, but it's, it's the West it's the other side. Um, you got to take at least one 200 level French course. Um, for most other geographic regions, you don't have to take foreign language courses um, in order to complete this competency. However, it's never a bad idea to take a foreign language class. Like, we don't do enough of that in the U.S. And any language learning that you do, even if you don't end up studying, I don't know, Chinese as a Peace Corps volunteer, like working that part of your brain is helpful. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, third competency, professional development and leadership. These are practical things that you're going to want to do anyway. So you're going to do resume prep and meet with somebody in the career center. You're going to do some interview prep, and you're going to demonstrate that you have leadership in some area of your studies life. Okay. And we'll talk about like, were you a leader in a club? Was it a job? Was it an internship? You know, it could be a lot of things. And then intercultural competence. We have a list of approved courses. You take three courses. Um, you're going to be taking a lot of these courses for your basic requirements for undergraduate anyway. So this just helps you focus that to apply it to um, having that intercultural lens. All right. Now, I mentioned a student guide and how I have these lists of classes. And you might think, what if I really want to take a class that's not on that list? Will you talk to me? I'm a nice person. I'm very reasonable. I'm going to ask you why you think it's relevant. Um, and we're going to figure it out. But just talk to me. Don't look at it and say, oh, well, I haven't done all three of these. And I graduate in the fall, so there's no way I can do it. Don't do that. Talk to me. And talk to me before the end of June because I will be out on parental leave. <laughs> you can talk to Cameron after that, but I'm trying to make Cameron's life easier. So talk to me before June. Okay, we already talked about different experiences. All right, so Peace Corps prep. It looks like there's a lot to this process. This is not a lot, I just like details, okay? But really you join the program. We have a form on Qualtrics It's on our website. You set up an advising appointment with me. I even have a link. So you can just make the appointment. We don't have to do that whole email back and forth thing. You can just like pick a time. Um, I'm gonna add you to a uh, like Microsoft group so that I can email everybody at once, make things easy for all of us. Then as you go about your classes, you know, we just check in like once a semester, you make sure you're connected to Kenyatta, you wanna talk to your recruiter, like duh, that makes sense. 
Um, and then to complete the program, there's like a couple forms we fill out. Um, for fall graduates, typically I have to send that in by September or early October. And then for spring graduates, like late February, early March. And we have one of our graduating Peace Corps prep students who is planning to leave for Peace Corps service. And I cannot remember which country right now, but Haley is on the call. Um, if she wants to say anything, uh, I'll give her a minute since, okay. Give me one second, Haley. And then I'm gonna let you say like why you did Peace Corps prep and like where you're going and we can be like, so excited. Okay. So I've said a couple of times that I work in the Sparkman Center for Global Health. And you might be like, what is that? Um, well, we are a center and we are located in the School of Public Health, but we have programs and serve students from all across campus. You do not have to be a public health student to get involved with us. Um, you don't have to be interested in health at all to do Peace Corps prep, okay? You could be like, I don't care about health. I care about education and English. That's fine. You could do Peace Corps prep. It's okay. I, I will not be mad at you, I promise. Um, if you are interested in global health, we have all kinds of lovely things you can do, including a graduate certificate. We have a mentorship program. We have travel scholarships and summer internships and a phenomenal, phenomenal and fun event called the Global Health Case Competition. Um, just all kinds of really great ways you can get involved with us. And the best way to find everything you need to connect with us is to scan that QR code with your phone right now or go to our link tree. Um, I can also put the link in the chat. But just so you know, we're here, we're amazing. That's all I have to say. And now let's bring Haley back. And also we can answer questions if people have questions. Hi, yeah, I'm going to Sierra Leone in June of this year. Sierra Leone, that's right. Okay, I knew it was an S. I knew it was Africa, but I didn't want to say the wrong one. Um, so what are you going to be doing in Sierra Leone? So I'll be a community health promoter. So we're both focusing on like maternal and youth health, but I'll also be working with schools, help with hygiene health, and like education about that. But I am pre-law, and so I wanted to mention about the prep thing. I'm pre-law, but I geared towards the health center like sector. And so I took like public health courses and things. So yeah. And so, wait, honest, so, so you said you're pre-law. What, what is your major? Oh, political science and philosophy. See? Which has really helped with, yeah, I took like international studies and like family and language courses that helped. So it was easy to set it in. Yeah. What made you interested in doing like Peace Corps prep and Peace Corps? Like, how did you find out about it? I'm not about Peace Corps when I was in high school, so I wanted to go. So in UAB, I was looking on the um, Engage pages and found Peace Corps prep when I was a freshman. And then it kind of helped and I did the exit checklist and kind of kept going with that and checking in. Awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kenyatta, we couldn't hear you. I was just saying congratulations, like to start as a freshman and now you're getting ready to leave. That is amazing. So, wow, congratulations. And I know you're gonna have an amazing experience. Oh, I'm gonna say thank you. She was very helpful in my like application process. So I started, I applied, it was like a week and I was like had everything to go, so. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Did doing the Peace Corps prep, did you have to like add extra classes that you wouldn't have taken otherwise? Um, I did, but they were like wanted classes. Like it wasn't, like it fit into my schedule. I didn't have to like exceed 18 hours or like it wasn't hard. It was um, some, most of them fit into like political science, but some were like the public health or like anthropology. But like I got to, I spoke with you and like some of them I got to fix and like, make yeah. them work that were on the list so okay okay mm -hmm. do you have any advice to students that are thinking about peace corps or peace corps prep uh, i would say research is a lot like i looked on the website a lot and like see what to do see what like the required 
things were in like um volunteer hours for leadership I got my through like doing things at UAB like my I was a safety specialist my youth camp and so that was, yeah just see how you can get involved yeah thanks I thought it was interesting, Kenyatta, when you were saying that when you were preparing to go, your research involved watching a lot of volunteers YouTube videos, because that was not something I thought of at all. I just like I've found been doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so interesting. And maybe, it, I mean, part of it is like different times, right? Because you were a volunteer from like, when did, when did you leave? 2015 to 2018? Yeah. So I was leaving when you were coming back. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, everybody's like WordPress <laughs> because some people had Instagram before I went to Peace Corps, but like not everybody had Instagram. Not everybody had like a smartphone. By the time I finished Peace Corps, like everybody had a smartphone. Mm -hmm. A lot of my students had smartphones, you know, um, like they would laugh at me when I did not have one. Um, and I was like, okay, rude. Um, <laughs> you know, in this country, it's not a lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it, it wasn't so much like Instagram or I'm sure I'm sure volunteers had YouTube, but um, I didn't find that. So that, I don't know. That's just like a different there's different strategies, I guess, to find Absolutely. resources and to find information to help. Yeah. And by blogging and blogging, you're literally doing the third goal. You know, you're sharing your experience with incoming, you know, volunteers who are trying to figure out, okay, well, what is Nicaragua going to be like? What is Botswana going to be like? So those things go a long way. It really does. Yeah. One of my really good friends that I made in Peace Corps was an older volunteer. She started a year before me mm -hmm. and I had been reading her blog um, and she had a really funny blog post. And I, you know, I think there's something about her being in her sixties to like write this um, about trying to buy a bra and that all of the bras were like so brightly patterned. Mm -hmm. And that for her, it was such like a culturally different, she's like, but I don't, I don't want people to see my bra. Like, I don't want, I don't want there to be like pink hearts showing through my shirt, you know, or like not necessarily being able to try them on. And like, um, I don't know. I just remember that that to me was like, oh, like, that's really interesting. And then when I met her, I was like, I've been reading your blog um, and I ended up living not far from her and we became super, we're actually going to FaceTime on Sunday. Like we're going to catch up. We still talk on a regular basis. She was one of my best friends in Peace Corps. Um, so sweet. Yeah. The Peace Corps makes the world so small. Like, you know, someone who knows someone and Haley, you'll see this. Like once you get with your cohort, you'll see, oh, you know this person. Oh, you know, that, and it makes the world just so much smaller. Oh, that is so, that's so awesome. We ended up having three volunteers in my group from mm -hmm. Northeast Alabama. Not what are the Alabama, chances? <laughs> from Northeast Alabama. Two of us graduated together. Wow. From a school that graduates like 300 people a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one from Alabama, like her parents knew his aunt or something, you know? Wow. Um, it was, yeah, it was we were the only volunteers in Alabama or from Alabama in Nicaragua, like across mm -hmm. the whole country, but we mm -hmm. all came in one group. I don't know how that happened. Man, that good. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Haley. I did, I asked Haley to come. I didn't prepare her at all for what questions I was going to ask her. So thank you so much, Haley, for just Absolutely. being willing to do that. <laughs> you did awesome. And yeah. congratulations again. Yeah. Oh, Can't wait to hear know. more once you're there. If you start, if you start a blog or like whatever, let us know so that we can subscribe oh. and like see how it's going. Absolutely. Um, I know it's 5:30 already. Uh is does anybody have any questions they want to ask? Or we were just so thorough and wonderful <laughs> and entertaining. I am going to put, let's see. Okay. I'm going to put our link tree in the chat um, so that folks can find us. Um, we are all over the socials, mostly on Instagram. 
is who's on Facebook? Nobody. Um, or you can email me there. I'll put that in the chat. Um, so if you're here and you haven't joined Peace for Prep yet, get with me Absolutely. before at the end of June, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I already put my contact info in the chat. Um, I will be out of the office tomorrow, but I will be back on Monday. If you all have any questions or comments or concerns about anything, I'm here as a resource again to support you. Do not hesitate to reach out. And I look forward to hearing from you all. And thank you so much, Katie, again, for the opportunity today to, to speak. It was so great seeing everyone. That was great. I love talking about Peace Corps. It makes me really happy just to like look at my own pictures. So I enjoyed it. And thanks to all the students for coming out. Thank you, Kenyatta, for your time. Um, it was great. Hope to hear from some of you guys soon. Let me stop the recording.